Welcome back to Political Politica with me, your host, Isabella Akinje. Now it's time for our Project Nigeria segment. So talk about... We like to use our Project Nigeria segment as a way for our guests to really speak about their big plans. So in your case, you're running for the number one job in the land. So look at Nigeria as a project. What would you say is the biggest challenge and how will you go about facing it? Well, we've got loads of problems, okay? So um, socially and economically, we've got loads of problems, you know, where we're an economy in reverse, right? You know, and then not only are we in reverse, we're speeding in, in reverse, shockingly, you know. Did a bit of research, found out that our budget in the year 1983 was $20.5 billion, right? In 1983, we had 80 million people living in Nigeria. Our budget this year, 2018, is $25 billion. So you just added $5 billion to that. But however, the, but the, the population has gone to 190 million. So what's that biggest that problem? We are providing much less for our people. We're allowing our people to live worse than wild animals, more than 70, and what will 80 you do million to people. And improve well, we the economy? There. You know, we get there. 70, 80 million people are living in despicable conditions in what they call bashers, houses made with sacks and slums, living inside their own fields. Come on. So we've got a big problem with the economy. And everything now plays out in things like the environment. Look at the environment our people live in. It plays out in education, the fact that even people go to school, but they come out and they're not useful to themselves. So it's all about the thinking, about the, the awful philosophical opinion of this. So what are we going to do? Number one, if we look at the economy alone, However, I think in terms of systems, I think systemically, I think of solution in one sector and how it's going to affect four or five other sectors. That's how I think. So first, first of all is to have a dream for the economy. I'm saying that Nigeria's economy should be growing at 15 to 20 percent. People say, why not? And people say, why? I say, why not? You know, uh, and then I did my research, found out that the U.S. economy was growing at 18 15, 12 percent, sometimes in the 50s, 60s, and 70s, you know, and I'm saying that this economy is still a toddler economy, we should be doing a lot more. And when I say we can grow by 15 percent, I'm saying that every Nigerian can be 15 percent more productive, right? Because that's what GDP is about. It's about also about productivity. We can add a lot more value to uh, our products that we're doing. We should now begin to move beyond primary products into secondary products, into tertiary products. As a matter of fact, you can look at Nigeria as a 58-year-old grown-up who is still in crutch. At least we'll be able to create three to five million new jobs, even in the public sector. My ideas are totally different from any other person in the space. I'm not coming here to talk about entrepreneurship alone or private sector, what they can do, they have to do what they can do. But I'm saying that we haven't actually established, we've not established a minimum standard of living for our people anywhere that they may live. And that's it. We've got to have that presence of mind to know that whether you're living in Makoko, you're living in Abule or you're living in wherever, that government must come to you, they must set a certain standard. There's a, some kind of standards that we're not going to accept as a people because we're being judged by those standards standards and by that uh, optics as a people. And then this dovetails into education. I believe that in terms of education, at the tertiary level, that all our university students, because of the developmental gap that we now have, the deficit, you know, that five million youths are in the universities, polytechnics, colleges and co, we can actually begin to use them to solve the problem in the area of their study. So if you're a civil engineer during students, for example, you know, your project, all right, we, we should be doing projects in groups and your project should be about real solution. For example, you can do a project of a 500 meter road using some sort of material or maintaining such a road and so on. You put a, a, a signboard on it and then you get graded for it, okay? And, and, and of course, I believe that they should be paid. So whether you, and if you're in environmental sciences, you should be solving environmental problems for us. If you are in oil and gas, you should, we should be building our own small refineries. Look, so you're I mean, leveraging if you look at the that, educational absolutely. system about to respond it, to, to respond societal to it, problems. Exactly, infrastructure okay, let's, issues let's look and at, You already spoke yeah. about China. So let's look at how Nigeria can play on the continent. Do you feel that what Nigeria needs is to be a part of an African Union that is very similar to a European Union? Where Absolutely. We, and why? I'll take it out of your mouth. You know, I mean, there's this AFCFTA thing, <clears throat> Africa Free Trade um, Agreement. And Nigeria, shock, shockingly and embarrassingly, was the country that was demurring and actually being a bit afraid of joining that union. Uh, and I felt that, look, we should be leading the charge. And people say, oh, we don't have the infrastructure to get it done. Come on, then you get the infrastructure done. And you don't have to borrow. Like I say, you know what is capital? Capital is anything you use to produce more. 
all right? Productivity. And that's it. We've got this capital in the university, right? We're not using it. We're frustrating those students' university. The professors are only interested in setting exams and frustrating them and, you know, if it's uh, whatever the kind of things that they do. I don't have to mention it here. We've got to take it out of their hands, you know? So we can, we can leverage that. It is capital. It is capital. And look, the top six companies in the world in terms of, uh, um, um, you know, market value are, are companies, some of them were created by students, are companies about ideas, Microsoft, Apple, Google, Amazon, Facebook, Alibaba. You know, these are companies created by sometimes teenagers. And so I believe that, look, we, in order for us to quickly catch up, we can tap into that resource, you know, and then, and then move forward. So it's about knowing how to solve all of okay. this problem in a systemic manner because we're coming from a huge deficit. And these are the kind of ideas we're throwing into the space uh, to disrupt our thinking now and the thinking of those guys who have been sitting on this country and, um, you know, generally uh, playing around, you know, because okay. we've had enough already. My final question will be on the issue of security, which has been a challenge for many years. What will you do differently? Well, the point is, um, first of all, what I will do differently from what is, uh, people are doing now, number one is that uh, in the first place you see that it, it hasn't been proven or shown that, um, uh, that the, the CNC in the country is on top of the security issue in the sense that the, the final bug doesn't seem to stop with him. If he did, he would have actually kicked out some of his service chiefs, once, one, one or two of them. Now, the first thing about security is that a lot of the problems we have right now are intelligence-based issues, and the intelligence box stops finally at the, at the table of the CNC, clearly. And so um, you have to be able to remove some of those guys that work with you on a whim. You have to also understand that no one is entirely trustworthy. You have to understand that the final box stops with the CNC in a country, right? And you know what we have seen so far is that look, it doesn't seem like the man is totally in charge, you know, and it's kind of uh, captured by some of the security services people, you know. So you have to be able to remove people on a whim, for example. You have to be able to test them. One critical issue in security is employment. Internal security, if you don't provide jobs for your youth, the devil will put jobs in their hands. You see kidnapping and all of that. And clearly there are jobs in this country. Until this country becomes like London, New York, uh, you know, uh, China, Dubai, South, uh, Saudi Arabia, the, or South Africa, there's work. There's massive amount of work in this country. I don't know why they are not giving those jobs out, but they must give those jobs out to our youth. Our youth are waiting to build their country. They must hand over the country back to the youth and let these people come with their energy, their passion, their innocence and they will get this thing done. And of course, their connectivity and their internet savvy, their tech savvy, they must use it. And that's the way this country will move forward. Thank you for your contributions on our Project Nigeria segment. Thank you so much. We'll be going on a quick break on Political Politica, but don't go anywhere because when the show returns, it's our lighthearted segment, the quickfire segment. You don't want to miss that. <laughs> 